Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I have got water. <laughs> so, I wanted to get into basically how water is treated for laboratory use and also what I'm going to do here in my personal workshop and new house. So, what I have here is tap water right out of our tap. And this is a cheap little uh, TDS meter off Amazon. Literally, it's just a multi well, not even a multimeter, it's an ohm meter. So it measures the resistance of water. So if we look at this, it says zero ppm, put it in the water. 421, which is still below the EPA's recommended threshold. I think it's around 500 is, uh, below 500 is considered safe to drink. Now here, I have distilled water. Should be pretty close to zero, if not zero. Yeah, that's not even picking up, so, I mean, this TDS meter, take it with a grain of salt. I'm sure there is uh, some TDS in there, because even, you know, off the shelf, distilled water isn't going to be completely pure. And now here is what's called reverse osmosis water. So it uses literally the reverse of osmosis. It uses water pressure to force water through a membrane leaving the uh, saltier liquid behind, which it then rejects and just disposes of in the sewer. And this should be maybe 30 or so? Oh, five. So, yeah, that's pretty damn good. Now, I don't yet have an RO system here in my house, but that's actually what I'm going to be putting in. From the RO system, I'm then going to be doing deionization, which will bring it to a state of purity that's above that of typical distilled water. So our goal, take this water coming in at 420 TDS, or PPM, and bring it down to a state where it is essentially zero. Now, what I'm going to do is actually branch off the RO system. So we're going to send up some to the kitchen for, you know, making coffee and tea and whatnot. That's going to be just straight reverse osmosis, so it might have between 10 and 30 parts per million. And then I'm going to put a branch off for use down here in the lab that is going to be deionized. It's going to run through an inline deionization filter with a nuclear grade resin that's going to take the water down to like God knows how many megohms, I don't know, 10 megohms or something. But uh, it's going to be ultra pure, zero parts per million, zero TDS. You could literally spray it on your car, let the water evaporate, and you wouldn't get water spots because there's no mineralization, no minerals dissolved in the water at all. That's the goal here. Let me show you my current setup, what I got going on. All right, so this is my current water system, and this part here actually isn't going to change. I just want to show you what's going on. So over here, we have the well input, or I guess output. So this is actually water coming from our well pump, about 150. Yes, we're not on city water, so no chlorine or anything to deal with. But it's coming in from the well, 150 feet below ground. There's a little pressure switch there that actually clicks the pump on and off depending on the pressure. There's our uh, bladder tank. So it's basically a pressurized membrane. Keeps the water level, uh, water pressure rather, relatively equalized and allows the pump to work less because it can store it up here under pressure. Then outputs it to uh, my first filter there which is a five micron sediment filter. From the five micron filter goes right to the softener. So the softener is actually an ion exchange resin that takes the dissolved calcium and magnesium minerals uh, along with some others in the water and exchanges them with sodium. So over here is the actual resin tank and there is a, uh, a salt tank, a brine tank. So every so often it has to regenerate itself with sodium chloride and uh, extracts brine from that tank, pumps it through there, regenerates, and then you're good to suck out a bunch of calcium and magnesium again. <laughs> from the softener, it goes to this big stainless steel apparatus. It's kind of tucked behind it there, but it is a massive UV sterilizer. So 55 watts of ultraviolet power. Um, we did have the well tested originally, and it did have some kind of bacteria uh, some kind of coliform in there. Um, it's not E. coli, but some sort of coliform. So let me show you. So here's the end of the UV sterilizer. This is where the bulb actually goes in, so you can actually see. I'm not going to look directly at it, but the whole tube is filled with massive UV light. And 
that actually destroys the uh, the DNA or RNA of bacteria, viruses, all that sort of stuff going through the sterilizer. And I think it handles up to like 12 gallons per minute, so really high flow rate. Nothing can multiply after going through there if it does survive. Another important thing to note here, you can see most of my system is comprised of PEX. I, I love PEX. Super easy to work with. Get the crimps, shark bites, whatever you want. Super, super easy. But you can see I did not use PEX for the connections to the UV sterilizer. And that's because that super, super intense ultraviolet light will destroy the inlet and outlet areas if it is plastic. So instead I use copper there. Copper isn't going to get hurt by huge intense UV radiation. So then finally up at the top there, I have a carbon filter. So that's a, a block carbon cartridge. But what we have coming out is reasonably pure, good tasting water. Obviously it does have quite a bit of dissolved minerals, but what I want to do is take this water that's coming out at 420 parts per million and bring it down to 1030 for kitchen use and zero for lab use. All right guys, so I just got the RO system installed <laughs> and I gotta say my favorite part about it is how it has American flags all over it <laughs> despite being made completely in China. It's a sad state of affairs there. But anyway, just gave her the initial fire up and you can see the first bit of water coming out of it, which I got here. Tons of carbon sediment, so that's coming out of the filters. So it tells you to run it for 10 minutes. So I actually have that uh, that valve there. You see I have it mounted right, right on top of my dino juice tank. But got that valve open, letting it run for about 10 minutes or so. All right, so here we are in the kitchen. The wife wants the RO spigot about here. So I just got a little template block to keep the, uh, keep the drill bit in place for the initial bit of hole. Because, you know, you can't really start a hole with a, a bit like this. So this will keep it, I'll put some plumber's putty on the bottom, stick it, and then that'll let me start the hole. So you got the bottom of the block, just got some plumber's putty on there, so one that'll adhere it, and two that'll keep it from spilling water. Squirt some water in there, and start the drilling process. A little late to record but just broke through so I'm just gonna take the final bit of cut here oh fuck yeah what a beautiful hole all right so I just wrapped up the bottom end connections let it flush for a couple minutes just to get any contaminants out of line so we'll see what uh what kind of TDS we're getting up here I did another flush of the RO system, so I'm hoping it's a little more pure. 16. 16 part per million, not too bad. All right, so got the RO hooked up upstairs and just set this little shelf up. Despite this looking out of, uh, <laughs> out of plumb on the frame, everything else is not quite even. Former owner of the house wasn't too fond of doing things right. But here's the DI water, and I've already tested it. Little disappointed. I'm not sure if ions are getting in from the faucet or if the cartridge just isn't doing a very good job. But it looks like yeah, two, two parts per million. So not quite zero. So seeing as we're still getting some titties in the water, you know, TDS, <laughs> what I thought I'd do is add another inline deionization bed. So that way the small remaining amount of TDS, you know, one or two parts per million, will get picked up by this sucker. And they claim this thing's good for like 400 gallons. So should get quite a bit of deionized water. All right. There we go. DI filter in place. I'll 3D print a bracket or, or make something out of wood just to go up there and hold it nice and in place. 
That's pretty sweet though. Woo! Nice! We are at zero. Total another zero. We have got some super pure water, guys. That's a lot of work just to have clean glassware. <laughs> Alright guys, so we have taken our crappy tap water <laughs> over a whopping 400 titties, pipums, down to, oh, let me clear it, I might have just contaminated it, but this is our DI water at zero, pretty freaking awesome, and just for reference this is distilled, or uh, this is the RO water rather, coming out at nine. So, very, very effective method of uh, taking the, the titties, TDS, out of water. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I know this wasn't the usual climatic sort of uh, <laughs> explosive and or whooshy ending we usually have. But nonetheless, pretty freaking cool that we have utterly pure water available anytime. So, wash, you know, certain reactions need very high purity levels of water. I mean, hell, you can even rinse electronics off with this stuff and not harm it. Hope you guys enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, leave a comment saying the videos suck, whatever you want to do. <laughs> I will see you next time. Have a great one.